Firstly, the real number part. The real number. Why do we say x is a real number? Are, is there anything like a fake number? The answer is no, there's nothing like a fake number. But we are going to talk about what are called complex numbers or imaginary numbers. Uh, and that's a little bit different. So what we're doing is we're, we're saying x is in the class of real numbers here. Okay, we're talking, a real number is every number you've ever dealt with uh, in your whole life. So all the whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the negatives, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, all the fractions, 1 quarter, 3 quarters, 7 eighths, all the decimals you can think of, pi, square root of 2, non-terminating, non-repeating decimals, every number you can possibly think of, all put together, is the group of real numbers. Am I getting that across to you? So when we say real numbers, we say x is anything you want it to be, and we're going to put conditions on this. I'll show you how to get to it in just a second. I want you to look back at this, this problem, okay? We're going to look at this problem, and we're going to think, are there any numbers that I cannot plug in to this problem because it would create the one error I cannot have in fractions? And by the way, what's the one error I cannot have in fractions? Zero. Zero. I can't have, how about the top? Does the top matter? No. No, numerators are fine. You can have zero there. I'm not even going to look at the, I'm not even going to look at the numerator when I'm looking for a domain. Don't even care. In our other problems, yeah, we care about the numerator. But when you're just talking about domain, I don't care at all. What we're going to look at is the denominator. What is my denominator right now? Is there a number that I plug into there that is going to make the denominator equal to zero? Six. Yeah. It's not zero, right? Because if I put zero in there, it'd be negative six. That's fine. It's not one because that'd give me negative five. But if I plug in six into that, put a six right here, notice how six minus six is zero, right? Is that okay to have? No. Nope. It's not okay to have. So what we're going to do is we're going to say x is a real number. I can plug in anything else, right? I can plug in, if I plug in two here, is it okay? Mm -hmm. If I plug in negative six, is it okay? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, negative 12. The only number I cannot plug in is positive 6. Nod your head if you're with me on that. That's the only number that would be bad. So we go, x is a real number, anything, and x cannot equal 6. That says if x equals 6, I get a bad problem here. I get something that's undefined. That's how you write your domain. You write x, that's from a variable, such that x is a real number, except x can't equal 6. That's basically what you're saying in this problem. Now, one way you can show your work on this without having to just think about it, what you do, this is going to seem kind of weird to you, you take your denominator, you set it not equal to zero. Why? Because what's the one thing the denominator cannot be? Zero. So set it not equal to zero. Then you solve it like you would any other equation. You add six to both sides, you get x cannot equal six, and that goes right there. Does that make sense to you? So you just set denominator, not equal to zero, solve it. So to find domain, you have to write the statement by the way, by the way. Set denominator, not equal to zero, and solve it. And you know what, we're going to practice a lot of this next time. How many of you feel okay with what we talked about today? So you feel okay with the dividing polynomials that we started with, right? And now the whole domain idea with rational functions? We're going to get on to more of that next time. Okay, so if you do remember from yesterday, we did do that problem. And we said that domain is really all the numbers that I can plug into a function and get something valid out. So pretty much anything that's not undefined. And when we went through this, we said there's one thing with fractions that we cannot have, and that's zero on the denominator of a fraction. And so when we look at the problem, with, with domain at least, we really don't care about numerators. We look right at the denominators, and what we know is that our denominator cannot be equal to zero. So what I told you to do is, it sounds a little weird, but set your denominator not equal to zero, like this, and solve it. This will give you the point or points that you cannot plug into your function. Are you with me on this? Everything else will work except this point. So we add 6 to both sides, and sure enough, we get x does not equal 6, and that's what we had there originally. And that makes sense because 6 is the only number I can plug in when the denominator does equal 0. That's, that's our problem. Are you with me on this one so far? All right, let's practice a couple more to show you the hang of this.
And again, we're looking for domain. We have g of x equals x squared minus 9 over 4. Hey, by the way, is it okay for the numerator to equal 0? Yes. The numerator, that's the top of our fraction. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. How about the denominator? No. Is this denominator ever going to equal 0? No. Okay. So when we write our domain, here's how we'd start it out. We'd say the domain is... We're going to write the same thing every single time. x such that x is a real number. And we would put any problems that we have. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Is it okay if x equals 4? How about negative 4? If I plug in negative 4, I know there's a 4 right here, but if I plug in negative 4, is the de denominator going to be 0? No. Then I don't care. Yeah, it's fine. How about 3? Plug in 3. Is that okay or not? No. Yeah, it's still going to be 0. Is the denominator going to be 0? No. Then that number's fine. Okay. It's only the denominator that I'm checking for with domain. That's it. Just the denominator I'm checking for with domain. If the denominator's not 0, your numbers are valid. So can you see up here on this problem that no matter what I plug in, this number is never going to change? Are you with me on that? No matter what I plug in. That means that this denominator will never be zero, which means that any number works. How we say that is x, such that x is a real number, and then we're done. So this says, in, in a nutshell, any number will work. If you plug in anything, you'll get something out of it that's valid. Even if we get zero, that's fine, but you will get something out of it. I think we understood that one. Okay, why we don't have this. Why we don't have this part of it? Well, you had a variable down here. If you plug something into that, specifically six, it's going to be zero. Here, you don't have a variable. It's a constant. That number's not going to change. That number's never going to be equal to zero, no matter what I plug in. Follow? Okay, I'd like you to try one on your own. Just so you get the hang of it, I want you to find the domain for h of x here. So we're going to write the capital D. We're going to write the same thing, x such that x is a real number. And then you're going to find out if there's any points that are problems here. <clears throat> hey, is this problem all real numbers like the last one was? No. Or, or do we have problems here? Yeah, I have some people going yeah, some people going no. Well, we've got to look at one spot specifically. Do we care about, for, for domain I'm talking about only, do we care about the numerator if I'm asking for domain? No. no. What I care about is the denominator, that's right. And the question is, are there any points, any values, that are going to make this part of it zero? And, yeah, that's great. And the way you find that out, because this is, this is very easy, we can do this one in our head, but the process is, what we do is we take the denominator, just the denominator, and we set it not equal to zero. Why do we set it not equal to zero? Because that is the one thing that we cannot have it equal to. Do you, are you with me on that? It's kind of a weird thing, we set it not equal to zero. But if we may solve that down, that's okay. That, that works out for us, and it goes right here. So if x plus 2 cannot equal zero, and you solve it, that means you're going to subtract 2 from both sides, and you're going to get that x cannot equal negative 2. Why it cannot equal negative 2 is because if you plug in negative 2, look what happens. Put negative 2 there and do the math. How much do you get? Zero. Is that a problem? Yes. It's a big problem. So we set the denominator not equal to 0. We solve it and we get this piece of the puzzle here. 
and we write that we finish this off. X is a real number. That means everything, but we go and X does not equal negative two. Let me finish that off. Now, what would happen in this case? We have like H of X or F of X, whatever. Five X plus four. This is where I'm going to see if you were really paying attention to what I was saying over here. Because if you just look at this and go, well, yeah, Mr. Leonard, these are easy. That one's six, that one's negative two. Duh. I mean, if you plug it in, you're going to get zero. I know that. I know that. Well, can you do that here? No. Not so much. I mean, unless you're like really, really quick, which some of you are, you just go, oh, yeah, that's going to be, well, I don't even know. But you're going to have to do the math on it. Actually, I think I know. But we'll find out. But the idea is the same as doing this step and doing this step. Okay, that's what's going to lead you to this problem. So when we look at this problem, we're asking for the domain, which I am again. Again, we're going to write x such that x is a real number. That pretty much says everything, and then the next part says your exceptions, your constraints, if you will. Now, what are we going to set not equal to zero? The top, our numerator, or the bottom, our denominator? The bottom. No. For domain, we do not care about the numerator. For other problems, yeah, of course, we're going to include the numerator. But for the domain, we don't care about that. The top can be zero. It's the bottom, our denominator, that we cannot have equal to zero. And so what we're going to do, just like the last couple of examples, we're going to set that denominator not equal to zero, and we're going to solve it. But guess what? Hey, have you solved things like that before? In here? Yeah. Sure, that was your C.1 homework. Right? When you remember how to solve something like this? Mm -hmm. How do you solve something like this? Diamond method. That's right, both of you are right. Uh, factory, which in this case is going to be the diamond method. Now, I do need to show you something. I haven't, I don't have your homework back today. I forgot it. It'll be back tomorrow. Uh, but I need to show you something about whether you have the extra step or not, and this is a great problem for us. You do remember how to factor, right? Instead of the diamond problem, I hope. And what goes here is the negative 3 and the negative 10. You see, a lot of you are spending a whole lot of extra time. Do you know, firstly, do you know how I'm getting the negative 3 and the negative 10? Okay, the negative 3, that middle number goes here. 1 times negative 10 goes here. A lot of you are spending extra time uh, doing that extra step when you don't have to. If you don't have to do the factor by grouping, geez, don't do it. That takes like two minutes. You don't want to waste your time, right? I'm saving your lives here again. See so what kind of guy I am? I'm helping you. So you don't want to waste your time if you don't need to, right? This is a waste of time on a test or something that you spend checking your answers or whatnot. So in this case, when you look at this problem, if there's no coefficient besides this one, you do not have to split the middle term and use grouping. That is a waste of time for you. Am I getting through to you? You go directly to your factors. If you do have the number up front, then yeah, you do. You split the middle term, then you factor by grouping. That's the only way we can do it uh, in this class. So after you find these numbers, uh, by the way, have you thought of these numbers as a rambling on there? Good. We're going to double check, make sure we get this right. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. Yeah, that works. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. Yeah, that works too, so those are the right numbers. Here's what I'm talking about, the extra step versus the not extra step. Some of you are still doing this. Please watch on the board. Some of you are doing this and still doing x squared minus 5x plus 2.